Okay, here's what's involved in checking your ignition point scout. In order to do that first, you need to remove the points cover. I've already pulled the screws, the bolts actually, that are holding it in to make this a faster process. And you remove this. And you can see that you have two sets of points there. The next thing to do is to remove this spark plug. Again, I've already loosened it and make this faster. And then following that, you need to have a pan to catch some oil that's going to leak out because you're going to remove this cover. And I have loosened these and I use, because they're tight, <clears throat> I use a an impact driver, uh, not with the hammer, but just because they have really good hardened uh, and correctly shaped uh, uh, Phillips heads. Uh, if I can get that in focus, uh, that fit these Phillips head bolts really well. And so I use these to loosen and tighten them. Uh, and then after I get them loosened. I'll finish up with just a regular good Phillips head screwdriver just after they're all three loosened. So I'm going to do that right now. Uh, one note is that you do have to push down on the uh, uh, gear change mechanism here in order to get to this uh, lower right hand uh, screw slash bolt. Okay, the next thing you need is a 14 millimeter socket, and it's best to have it on a long bar. Uh, so I used an adapter so I could go up in size and uh, you take this and it fits the bolt on the end of the crankshaft that is the alternator that you see behind it but you're not trying to loosen that you're just trying to turn the engine over and what you do is you put your finger your index finger on the spark plug hole and do this with this ignition turned off be sure absolutely that it's turned off and put your finger on that hole and with this uh, 14 millimeter socket on the crankshaft you turn it over until you begin to feel it on the compression stroke you'll feel it pushing against your finger in fact uh, when you feel some pressure you can pull your finger off and you'll you'll feel and hear a little whoosh sound that is from the compression so you know it's on the compression stroke and that lets you know that you're in the uh, right in the right positions to uh, be able to check the gap on the ignition points. And so what you do then is you go down here to the alternator, and on the alternator, uh, it's got an LF mark here, and you can see that I've also put a little black dot on it. And then uh, it's going to be upside down, but then there's an F mark too, and those are going to come in uh, as reference points for you to be able to turn the engine over to get the points to the maximum position open so that you can check the gap on them and that's what I'm going to do next. Okay so I've ro rotated it, the crankshaft so that the LF is, is past this little indicator mark which is set on the stator part of the alternator assembly. It's kind of hard to see but it's, uh, it's a little uh, carved in uh, groove there and that's your lineup mark. Um, when you're lining up the positions, the uh, LF and the F. So anyway, uh, the points now, I'll go up here and show you that the points for that side, which is the left side, are open to their maximum. And then I took out my feeler gauge and they're supposed to be between, tw between 12 and 16. And so I go for 14. And it's a little bit tight on 14, so I'm going to open it up slightly. And to do that, you loosen two screws, and one of the screws is kind of hard to see, but it's it's uh, buried back in here. I'm trying to see if I can get a better view of it for you. There it is, right yonder. That screw and this screw right there, and this is slotted up here. Uh, and I'm actually doing it on the wrong side. It's this, it's this left one here that we're doing. And there's some little pegs there 
uh, is also along with these little uh, slots that are cut out of the points and that's to let you get a screwdriver, a flat tip screwdriver in there to open and close the scout. And so what you're doing is you're not moving this uh, uh, phenolic base center here, is you're moving the actual points where they mount on the base itself. So I'm going to loosen those up and open this gap to six, uh, excuse me, to 14. Another thing I'll mention is uh, I, split, I put that spark plug back in there as soon as I determined that I had found the compression stroke. And I just finger tied it in there uh, just so you don't get, you know, debris and stuff being sucked in there when you t play around with this crankshaft. So anyway, uh, it's just in there loose for right now. And of course, I'll tighten it up good with the socket and all that. I always finger tight them, you know, until I know they're, you know, not cross threaded before I put the socket on. Okay, so I've opened up this scalp and I went ahead and decided to open it to 16. And that's uh, almost about max where my adjustment is on this set of points. So hopefully they don't wear anymore and it'll hold that 16. Uh, there's been an issue with this uh, uh, cam on this point still and uh, uh, where the, the points open and close with it having some corrosion and causing the, the little feet here which is the phenolic part. I call it phenolic, that's what it looks like or bakelite or whatever causes those, those feet to wear and so uh, I've already gone through one set of new points and this is another set and I used more and a different type of grease after uh, going through with emery and cleaning up this cam and uh, if it keeps wearing we'll have to get another cam or go electronic anyway so now that I've got this done uh, I'm going to go back down here um, again using my 14 millimeter socket and I'm going to turn this over again. I'm always turning this counterclockwise, and I'm going to turn over the crankshaft until the right set of points open. And when I see the right sets open, as you can see right now, they're closed. But when I see them open, then I'll go past that point until I know that, are, that they are at maximum open position, and I will check and adjust them accordingly. Okay, so the right side was also snug too. Uh, a type 12 so yeah they worn in a little bit uh, so maybe hopefully uh, they'll quit wearing and so I went ahead and set this one to 16 one thing I'll mention is when you loosen these screws the, the top one on the points and the, the bottom one you know don't loosen them much just loosen them enough that you can uh, use that screwdriver that flat tip screwdriver blade in these pegs uh, and using these tabs and grooves etc uh, you'll figure it out but uh, if, you, if you keep them snug then you can uh, still move them and it'll hold the position and then once you uh, once you have your gout just like you want it uh, you know obviously tighten them both down uh, nice and snug and then check your gout again to make sure it hadn't moved so I've got these both set now and I'm just going to do reverse procedure uh, put this back together the, the, you know the points cover is pretty straightforward and the one thing I'll mention about putting on the, uh, the alternator cover is these three bolts um, there's some o-rings that that uh, help seal them help seal the oil and what you want to do is uh, to make it easier to put this back in is go ahead and, and screw these all out about halfway um, and that'll make it easier to put it back in because it has to kind of be wiggled uh, in amongst this over here amongst this uh, uh, gear change lever when it's in the down position uh, to get it out and the same way about getting it back in so go in and take these and uh, with your fingers and, and on the other side of Phillips head screwdriver go ahead and unscrew them about halfway okay so I have the alternator cover back on and I use the regular Phillips head, which you can see right there, to get those in and slightly snug, the, the three uh, Phillips head bolts. And then I went with my big boy here, the, uh, the good hardened tilt um, impact driver. And again, I didn't hit it with the hammer. I didn't actually, you don't want to get them anywhere near that tie. I just uh, 
use it to get a, a little bit snugger fit on those. Uh, there's just a thin gasket that seals that. You don't want to get it so snug you can't get them off without stripping them. But the heads on those uh, impact drivers, uh, especially the, the older ones, are hardened and, and they there's several different angles of it and there's there's one that just fits these just perfectly. So now that I've done that and I got the points cover on and uh, cleaned up the uh, little bit of oil that'll drip from underneath uh, the uh, alternator cover and after you take it off, uh, you can also next go in and tighten this spark plug, finger tight first, and then finish with the wrench. Rehook your spark plug wire and uh, with all of that said, it doesn't hurt to, to go ahead and check the oil level again to make sure you haven't lost uh, any noticeable amount. Really, only about a maybe teaspoonful uh, comes out, you know, from the alternator cover. So usually it's not an issue, but it never hurts to check. You don't want to run it low. So the next thing is to get the lift down and uh, start it up. Okay, so we're going to do a crank up here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, right over here, put the head top in the reserve position because I don't have a lot of gas in it. Turn on the ignition switch, which was already on, shutting them down. And the kill switch on. And I just cranked it so it should not need to be choked. This lever in this, is, this position is in the run position. Sorry for the finger in the view. And just a little bit fast, it should settle down as it warms up. If you do need to adjust the idle, what you do is you come back here and you put your hand over the exhaust and you see which one is pushing the most. And right now they're both pushing about the same. So when it warms up, it should settle down to about 1500. Uh, right now it's at about no, it looks like I said about uh, 1600 right now. It's starting to settle down. And that's a little bit fast idle, but I would rather have it a little bit fast than too low. You can pull the settling down a little bit more now. And if you do need to adjust the idle, there's only one screw on each carburetor. And that's right here. You'll figure out pretty quickly by following the exhaust path. That particular one is the bottom. They both feel really pretty good right now. Don't even. All right, so now I'm pretty happy with this idle. And again, it's a little bit on the fast side, but that's okay. This engine it hasn't been run in years, so uh, the low idles are bad for them. So now we'll take it for a test drive. I do suggest a habit of turning it off here at the ignition key. And that way you won't accidentally, like I did, leave the ignition on and run the battery down. Okay, we'll do a test ride and then we'll do a plug check after it cools down. One thing I did forget to mention that because we've had some overflows on carburetor issues, just get in the habit of turning off the petcock once you've killed the bike. And I was in reserve, so I'll go all the way over. And that position is off, okay? And that should hopefully keep us from having any leaks out the overflow tubes. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. And of course, before I do a test ride, um, you know, I will turn that back on. And you can actually, uh, you know, if, after you've run the bike, you can actually crank it with that off because there's enough fuel in the float bowls you know, to crank and run the bike for a while, for a few minutes. But you can crank it up and then turn that on immediately. Uh, just kind of get into that habit. And uh, if, if it does overflow here, you know, put, have some rags sitting below there. It shouldn't be a whole lot. You should, you should catch it. You wouldn't want to do it all night long. That would be a mess. But uh, the bike will crank and it may run fast at first because it's going to have um, more fuel than it should in that particular carburetor uh, but it'll uh, it'll bring that back down and uh, because we've had these issues and obviously Honda knew there would be some issues with this and that's why they put these uh, overflow tubes and the 
uh, the little uh, stem inside the, the flow chamber that, that has a hole in it for the overflow. And so now we really will go for a test ride. Then a plug check when it cools down.